What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. This is gonna be the first video I've done since be, you know, returning to the States. And this video is gonna be a tutorial on how to change out thermal paste on a somewhat modern day graphics card. This is an RX 580 I picked up and is gonna be going into a new ITX build, believe it or not. And that video will be coming out uh, about the same time as this one. So. What makes this one different than my last thermal t uh, thermal paste video is it's got a back plate. We're gonna take this off. Um, you got the four screws. This graphics card, as you can as you can see right here, has not been opened up. So if you guys do plan on doing this, just just letting you know that this will actually void your warranty on your card. I wouldn't necessarily do it on brand new cards because it's you know straight from the factory so it should have good thermal compound already on it but since this card is about five or six years old now I think this came out in 27 or uh, 2017 or 2018 something like that uh, it's a good idea to go ahead and change the thermal pace as, as it has been a long time uh, so I hope you guys find this useful and helpful as we tear down this card I'll show you like all the power plugs everything you need for the fans that all that good stuff as well so I hope you guys will stick around and uh, enjoy the video. All right, guys. So I've already got most of the screws out of the back plate. Uh, the reason we're taking the back plate off is so that you guys can kind of have a full uh, like tear down of this card, just so you can see like the PCB, all the connectors, everything. So the only screws I have left are here, here, and here, as well as right there. So we're going to go ahead and finish those up, and then we'll move on to taking off the back plate which should just come off right and easily. A uh, little tip, always have something to put your screws in. Uh, I'm actually using the front panel of the case I'm building in uh, as I've already got it torn apart. And it's literally right next to me. So, uh, but you know, if you have like a little tub aware or something like that, you know, just something so that you don't lose the screws because these screws are kind of hard to replace if if you do lose them. Alternatively, you can leave all the screws in the back plate and just lift it off. All right, so there's the PCB. All right, now all we have to do is remove these four screws. And as I said before, this little sticker here, if it's broken, it actually voids the, uh, the warranty. The factory seal. So, on one hand, you'll know that hey, nobody's tampered with this card. On the other hand, it may be harder to get them to actually do anything about like if something breaks on it or something like that. Now, that's why we gotta be careful. We don't want to damage anything. Now, all you have to do is poke down on the sticker, and there we go. There's the last one. All right, so flip over the cooler or the graphics card, and just kind of gently. There we go. And yeah, that thermal paste is definitely bad. Now, so these right here are the mounting holes for the back plate, and. And they're like kind of held in with like basically double-sided tape and like thermal pads as well. So we see it down here. We got our plug. We just want to gently lift that up. We don't want to break that. Okay. And there is our heat sink right there. All right. So next, we're gonna have to get some uh, isopropyl alcohol, and we're gonna wipe down the entire card and we're going to get it uh, put back together. All right, so the I'm using you can see that it's 91% isopropyl alcohol. Take a little bit of a paper towel, just fold it up. Get it a little wet with the with the alcohol and just start wiping down the both the heat sink and the CPU die. Right, we'll move this away. 
Let me work on this first. Then you, once you got that done, just take a, another paper towel and just dry it gently. Be careful with the thermal pads, this one's already loose. Okay, looks like we're good. All right, now that we got everything kind of dried off, or not dried off, but cleared out, we're gonna just take our rag, dry off any excess alcohol. She got a little bit of compound onto this here chip. Where did I put my... There it is. Won't hurt anything, but just want to kind of make it nice and pretty again. All right, so uh, now we got to use our thermal compound, and I got some from Cooler Master. All right, so this came with the cooler that I'm going to use. It's a Master Gel Pro, and it's more than enough for a CPU as well as a GPU. So we're just going to take our... Do. And that should be plenty right there. All right. This is non-conductive as per Cooler Master's website. Okay, there we go. All right, it's in the proper spot, and all we have to do is push it down. All right, fan's reconnected. Got to make sure this is actually behind this, actually. If that's how it was beforehand. It wasn't around like I was trying to do. All right, so once we get all the screws in, we just got to pop it into the test bench, which is actually going to be the computer I built here and check thermals. Now I could have done a thermal test beforehand, but honestly, this is kind of a basic, like you should do this every time you buy a used graphics card anyway, because a lot of the so-called performance loss is actually just heat issues because thermal paste is bad. So once you get thermal compound changed out, typically the the performance loss is a lot less than it was before. Yeah, I mean, you're always gonna have a little bit of performance loss when buying used graphics cards compared to brand new out of the box. Uh, it, with the caveat of how old the used card is, if you just bought a used 3080 or something like that, it's more than likely gonna still be just as strong as it did when it came out of the box. But something like this that's been out for a couple years, you're gonna get a little bit of performance loss anyway you know so why why not do some basic maintenance sort of things in order to make sure it 
the uh, the loss is minimal. Got the graphics card all back together and thermal paste changed. Hope that was helpful for you guys. Be sure to like and subscribe if you like this. Be sure to check out the other videos and including the ITX build I'm about to do using the Cooler Master uh, Cooler Master Elite 120. Really small case. Um, I'll probably have to do some case mods. Not in this particular video, but in a later video in order to kind of help increase the airflow and uh, possibly even put a AIO in it. We'll just have to see on the AIO part, but it'd be really cool if we could. Anyway guys, that's going to do it. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys next time.